We start with a point. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Rob Bryanton, and this is the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called The Pencil Visualization. Now, the beautiful animation we're looking at here of a rotating four-dimensional tesseract comes from the Wikipedia article in Hypercubes. With Imagining the Tenth Dimension, we're talking about how reality springs from ten spatial dimensions. Some cosmologists have claimed that the tenth dimension is beyond our comprehension, that it's impossible for anyone to actually imagine such a thing. With this project, we've used logical puzzles to help us to do so, building one layer, one concept upon another. This is the basic process of all learning. We start from simple concepts and we grow from there. Remember, we're talking about spatial dimensions here, and that means that each spatial dimension is at right angles to the one before. Let's use a paper and a pencil to visualize what that means. We'll start with a piece of paper. If you have a piece of paper on your desk and you stand a pencil straight up on it, that pencil is at right angles to the paper. So a single point on the paper would be like the zero we start from in my original animation. And if we were to stand the pencil on the paper, it would be like the first dimension. A simple line on the paper can represent the first dimension, in which case the pencil would be like the second dimension. Or a square on that paper is like the second dimension, and the pencil would be in the third dimension. A picture of a cube on that paper is like the third dimension, in which case the pencil is like the fourth. A picture of a tesseract represents the fourth dimension, and so the pencil would be like the fifth, and so on. Obviously, this gets harder and harder to visualize as the number of edges increases with each additional dimension, but the logic keeps working. If our paper had a picture of an anoract on it, which is a nine-dimensional hypercube, then it would be like our pencil was in the tenth dimension. But what's all this about tesseracts and anoracts? If you go to the Wikipedia article on hypercubes, you'll see that the point we started from can be called a zero cube, and the 1D line can be called a one cube, and so on. Here's the whole list. Zero cube, a point. One cube, a line. Two cube, a square. Three cube, a cube. Four cube, a tesseract. Five cube, a pentaract, six cube, a hexaract, seven cube, a heptarach, eight cube, an octaract, nine cube, an anaract, and ten cube, a decaract. Think about a cube. Then look at the 4D hypercube animation we started this entry with. Do you see how there's a 3D cube within that shape? And how there are additional edges that are extending out at four-dimensional right angles to create this 4D hypercube, this logic continues all the way up. Now, if you watch my video, What's Around the Corner, it tries to explain these concepts using a somewhat similar approach. Here's a link to that video. I hope you'll check it out if you haven't seen it already. Next time, we'll look at poll 83, which asks, is energy not conserved? My name is Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.